Well, hello, 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 hello. I've been sent a video which is apparently titled the most convincing ghost footage you've ever seen. And there was five of them, but I looked through it and then I had to get rid of one because it was the most boring piece of ghost footage I'd ever seen. I'd like to go through it with you all because I was told... You cannot give up this and you cannot apply any logic to this. It defies logic. Come and have a look with me. Come with me and you'll be in a world of watching shitty videos. Right, here I am. DaVinci Resolve is open. The only reason I put this into DaVinci Resolve is so I can put it into full screen mode and then I can go through frame by frame with the trusty speed editor. So let's put it into full screen mode. There we go. So we're in full screen mode. And this is from Dr. Horror, by the way. So please make sure you, you have a little subscribe and you, you go and show them some support. I quite like the channel. Although it doesn't have any voiceover, uh, which means there'll be a lot of my voiceover, so I'm sorry. Dr. Horror, the five most convincing ghost videos. Again, four-ish. Okay, I'll let you watch this one through first. I'm going to let you watch the video through first. <gasps> An unbelievable silence. And then I'll go back over and explain some of the things I caught, some of the things I will speculate, but there we go. Violent presence in the house. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's go back and see what we can see. It's a nice and simple one to get us started. So, first thing you're going to notice is, as the child runs off, there is an exposure shift, which can be expected when someone leaves the frame um, because it's trying, to catch, it's trying to catch the reds in there, so the frame will slightly darken. But this one darkens ever so slightly questionably because there is a mask in this one. There is actually a mask where we can see it. So if we watch... So there's the bang. Girl reacts to the bang. And then she runs away. Okay, here, be here comes the exposure shift. That's when it goes from lighter to darker. Okay, so you can watch. If I slow it down, you'll see the shift. It's very subtle, but if you watch, it goes light and down to dark. Now, first thing we have to notice is the positioning of the bowl. It's on the edge of the desk. So this is quite an easy one where someone underneath the desk can go poof. But they're like, where? But then you're like, where are they? Well, my theory is here that there is just here. This is just a masked point underneath. So it's just the same frame, a cut in half and then a cut and stick. And the reason for this is as we go on. So I think this is hit and knocked by the person. So it lands, I mean, it lands perfectly in that box, which I love. I think the next two are actually stuck with just two little bits of tape, and there's somebody just on the desk that pulls them from underneath the desk. And this, it's got that kind of pulling motion from the front because the back lifts up. So if you watch, there's a little lift at the back. Uh, if I just play it, you'll see. It. So there's that little jump, which would give the indication of them being tugged from under the desk. Now, this is where I am. Well, there, yes, there is a mask under the desk because we can see it. <laughs> Hashtag spoilers. So just here, if we look, we can actually see where the masking point is. It's right here. So the desk has been hit. It provides that inconsistency. It's just there. So, yeah, that is literally it. It is a nice and simple one there. It's, it, I mean, it's a good mask. And we can also see what So So watching it again through the, the eyes of somebody who's looking for a mask if you watch. So we've got a we've got a point where the exposure has dropped. It could have been manually done for the sake of having the mask in there, but it doesn't really matter either way. So I think that is just the camera adjusting. Then this bowl, I believe, is just hit from underneath, which is perfectly viable. Those two are on a piece of fishing wire, and that is somebody underneath just in the desk. 
So that was the most convincing one, number one done. This next one is actually my favorite in this entire video because it is actually really, really well done. Um, again, I'll let you watch it through and make up your own minds and see if you can spot what I spotted. There's more. Okay, so let's go back and let me talk you through why it's my favorite and how we know it's fake. There are a few things here we have to look at. Um, first and foremost, congratulations to the people who did this because it's really well done and really clever. The first thing we have to pay attention to is the that it's filmed on a screen showing the CCTV. We, we know CCTV can just be exported. If this was this amazing piece of ghost evidence, that CCTV would have been exported. The reason it's done like that is because there are a lot of masks in here and there's more than just her in this room. We can tell this because of the, it's been very well re rehearsed and she takes her positions very, very well. Right, so we've got the first chair which she reacts to at the back where the arrow was. And then the second chair she reacts to is going to move right now. And the first time we know there's somebody else in this room, I'll show you where it is. So second chair moves. Okay. And then she scurries. Okay, she's standing back from the chair, so she's taking her point. Now here is... So she's going towards... And here she is at the door. All right, but what I want you to pay attention to is this table right here. The tablecloth. Right, so that stopped moving, and now she's going to fall on the floor. Now, somebody has realized she's kicked the tablecloth, and then somebody from the inside pulls that tablecloth into itself, if you watch. Right there. So somebody, somebody's like, got to cover that, 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 that part up. So you don't need a mask there. But this is where we start to find and see some of the masks when we just skip through by the frames. So, she's taken her position here. She needs to be here because this chair needs to be thrown. And the last thing they want is her to get hurt by the chair. So, when we just frame it, we can see the evidence of a couple of masks when we go frame by frame. So, we have... I, would, I initially thought it was a frame skip on the camera. Um, but we haven't had any of that as to yet, and we've had a cover-up. I missed the cover-up, sorry. So we've had, like, a mistake cover-up, which is right when the table moves. So if I just come back, just here, there's an effect put over. This is an effect. This is this is just a transition effect that you can find, I believe, inside Final Cut Pro. Um, it's been, that's used to cover up a mistake. That is absolutely used to cover up a mistake. We all do it. So there, she's run there, and then she's put, watch the way, the transition to the way she runs, and then she hits the floor for no reason whatsoever. It's not a feint. She's put herself on the floor. Now, keep an eye on this section here. And there is just ever so slightly, just between the two, just as we do it, you'll see just there, there's just a frame movement. 
and it just it just blends into itself. So there is there is somebody there, and that is so because we get no other frame skips. We get the motion blur, we get the landing, we get everything else, and then the picture starts to move on the wall here, which is somebody just underneath. This is just a collection of really well done masks, and. I really like that one. I thought it was really well done. Um, the positioning was really well done. It was well rehearsed. It was well put together. They'd filmed it on a screen rather than the actual footage so people couldn't spot the masks. Um, but I really, really enjoyed that one. It was great. This one I've seen a few times. I think this has popped up on TikTok. Uh, but I just noticed something this time which I felt quite interesting. So watch through and see what you spot. This is no contraptions, no contraptions, just a man and his video camera <laughs> and his blinds. Move them. Do it. Do it. Okay, so let's go back a little bit and allow me to speculate. I don't have to go back all the way through it, I don't believe. So I'm just going to come back to here so we can kind of... So I can point out the biggest alarm bell. This is this is a very, very speculative one. But my biggest alarm bell is this coat <laughs> right here. Why is it portioned right there and why is it kind of positioned as if there's somebody underneath it, namely a child or something? That would be my question here. And you could do the same with a side by shoving a child down the back of a sofa. The reason I ask that is there is a portion of this where the blinds move and they bunch together oh. and go towards that section. So these blinds here go towards this section in a bunch as if there's something quite loose on there. It's just pulled tight. I would think on this, because obviously all the blinds are joined together, aren't they? And things like this, they're all on a single like string at the bottom, I believe, like a loopy thing. So once you pull one, they're all going to move anyway. So all it takes is somebody just sitting underneath here with a couple of these attached, like the binds attached to some fishing wire, and it's just an easy pull. Because they all swing very favorably in that direction, and if we just slowly go back. What? I'm pretty sure there's another piece where they move. And we can see another bunching in that direction. 
fish. Yep, there we go. It's right there, look. So it goes directly to where the coat is, and there's a bunching right there. As a speculative debunk, it's important to say this because I can't see any fishing wire. There is a coat covering something laying somewhere it shouldn't be in the weirdest possible way. We have to question the framing in this. The blinds bunch and go to the direction of what is being covered. That is all I have to say about that. On to the next one. The next one I love as well. I love everything. Right, let's just fast forward this. Okay. Vintage doll with no mechanical parts moves on its own. See if you can work this one out. This one is, this one's a nice and easy one for everyone to do. fantastic piece of evidence there's no talking so just just watch very very slowly and just see in your head when it comes to the point of wow that doll is moving this one is is just is, is well done I've, i enjoyed this one i got this one within the first 15 seconds i spotted this one <laughs> And it's actually well done the way they've done it. But it's very obvious how it's done. Like, this is absolutely how this one is done. Okay, so this one you can tell how it's done in a few ways. There's a few really, really telling things here. And the number one thing that gives it away is that timer in the bottom right hand side. That timer is added after the fact. And that timer is there to sell time. Because <laughs> what's actually happening, what you're actually witnessing is stop motion. All that's happening is it is stop motioned so it's the doll frame move doll frame frame move 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 and it's gone over and over and over again this would have taken about two hours to put together and just with little movements put in piece by piece and then all you do to totally sell the effect is throw a timer over which is in totally the wrong position for a camera timer just because the way it's framed and it's like taking over the center of the frame, it being to the bottom right hand corner of the frame, that has been added on afterwards to sell it. It's just stop motion. And you have to agree that if you didn't really look at it as stop motion, looked at it for what it was, you'd be freaked the fuck out. But this is stop motion all the way. And it is really well done. I've seen what some people do with this stop motion stuff is really, really clever. So what they do is there is a um, like a 24 hour camera that watches a doll somewhere. It's not the My Haunted Hotel one, it's another one. But the 24 hour camera is not a live feed. It's they actually do stop motion and then they compress it all together. They use something called optical flow, which makes all the, all the whole the footage just flow as one. And then they play that footage back live. And then people, once they then speed it back up, like in this case, think they've just witnessed a doll moving live and it's all just pre-recorded footage and it's done fantastically. And I think this is probably something very, very similar to this. Uh, these experiments happen everywhere and it is a, and they're all just a, just, just a con. I hope you enjoyed that. I was sent this video and I thought I'll take a look at this and I, I really enjoyed watching them. Um, especially when they're called the most convincing 
theatrical ghost footage you've ever seen. And it's just like, it's so fucking bad. It's unbelievable. Right, I will be back this evening. I'll be live. I'll be playing a game that Beardo's told me I've got to play. He played it on a Sunday, I believe. So I wouldn't have been able to watch it because Sundays is a family day for me where I have my children. So it's called The Summer of 58. Apparently, I'm going to be scared shitless about this game. So that should be fun. So do come and join me. It'll be 7.30 p.m. today, UK time. This is Wednesday. Tomorrow, I'll be live at 7.30 p.m. with the Fever Dream live stream. And that should be my week. There may be another video coming on Friday. Who knows, my devilish good friends. And on that, I shall leave you with this. Be good to yourselves. And if you can't be good to yourselves, be good to everybody else. Because that, my friends, is what it means to be human. I bid you adieu.